Thistle and Verse, and today I'm going to be doing the booktube birthday tag. So my first booktube birthday was on March 21st. I actually didn't realize it had happened, and I saw who was, I think it was Lamore de Books doing her booktube birthday tag, and I was like, oh, that's cute. Can't wait for my booktube birthday, then I can do the tag. And I, like, checked the calendar, and it was about a month ago now. So circling back around to it now, and... Let's get into the questions. What has kept you motivated to continue making videos? Mostly interacting with people in the comments. Uh, getting on Twitter was like really helpful for me in terms of like just interacting with people. I don't know, it's easier for me to interact with people on Twitter than it is for me to interact on YouTube. And you know, people watching and commenting and subscribing, you know, makes me feel like what I'm doing is meaningful. So if you've done any of those things, thank you. If you've retweeted any of my videos, thank you. The viewers are the reason I keep doing what I'm doing. What are three of your favorite videos you've made in the past year and why? So first favorite is my Kaboomathon wrap up. I think that's the first time I like really tried to make a nice thumbnail and I think that it looks cute. So that was one I really liked and I think that was one where I started getting like comments from people that I had been like trying to build like acquaintance, acquaintanceships, relationships with people on Twitter. Um, my second favorite was the page to screen tag. That was just a lot of fun for me to make. I also had a little more th fun with the thumbnail on that one. And it was just like so easy to film. It felt like I just sat down and I like went through stuff. It was so easy to edit. It was just a breeze to make. Then last one is my review for Nia's Whisper by Sheena Howard. And that's just a milestone because that was one where an author reached out to me and like asked me to review something. And I think my thumbnail and my video are pretty solid. I think that's like probably the best review I've done so far. But I think that's what I've done the best about like being focused and concise. And yeah, I was able to actually get the review out in a timely manner, which was nice. The next question is, what have you struggled with on BookTube in the past year and how did you overcome that struggle? Uh, truthfully, I felt like everything was a struggle. <laughs> like, I feel like outside of reading and having opinions, there isn't much about booktubing that comes naturally to me. Like, there was a while where, like, I really did not like looking at myself on camera, did not like listening to my footage. So, like, editing was, like, such a chore, and, like, I really didn't want to film. Thumbnails, everything just felt really difficult because I was very self-conscious of how I looked and how I sounded. And then I just kind of stuck it out and like getting used to like what are the ins and outs of like the basics of iMovie. Other than that, asking people for help and also just like watching other people's videos and like paying attention to like how they were editing, if they like mentioned like their process for stuff. So yeah, overcame it just through repetition, paying attention to other people's process and asking for help and realizing the power of scheduling. Uh, choose one moment from the past year on booktube that you would love to relive. I mean, I felt really good when I got Ark from Nikki Drayden for Escaping Exodus. That was like a big moment. And it was kind of like a setup for, um, I wouldn't say a failure, but a setup for disappointment. It's like when you take a kid fishing and like they just throw out their line and they get a fish right away. People say it's a bad setup because most of fishing is just sitting around waiting for a fish. And so I got that first arc and I like thought I was somebody and I thought it was going to be really easy to get E arcs after that. And like, no, <laughs> I don't think I've gotten very many arcs that I've requested except for Wraith and Ruins, which I was actually denied for. And then I don't know if COVID messed with something or whatever, but then I got approved for it. And people are starting to reach out for reviews now. But that was a big moment. And also just around the time where I did my December wrap up, I felt like I was just kind of coming into my own. I felt very comfortable like promoting myself on different platforms. I felt good about what I was putting out. Like I think part of what made it difficult for me to promo myself was because I felt like I didn't have like a good product to like give people. I felt like the quality wasn't there. And so I felt like weird asking people to watch and... I was starting to get like decent views on my own even when Onyx Pages wasn't boosting me when I was like just like promoing myself and like that felt that felt nice. So shout out a huge support of your channel, Onyx Pages. 
She puts me on a lot, and for that, I'm thankful. And Olivia's catastrophe, Olivia's catastrophe, like, retweets me a lot, and I appreciate that. And I also will shout out Simone X Owen Co. and um, Opalescent because they've tagged me. They've tagged me in book tags. Also, thank you to Ghost Reader. I remember sometime in February he did a post asking for uh, Black booktubers to leave their links, and he would, you know, signal boost. And I was one of the people I signal boosted, so thank you for that. And um, this Brown Girl Reads is also tagging me and stuff. So. Those are some of my big supporters. Thank you. <laughs> Made possible by viewers like you. Uh, what's the best book you've read in this past year? That's a hard one. I'd say Pet by Kweke and Mezzi. They are such a talented, creative author. Like, and I feel like they're always doing their own thing, you know? Like, I don't feel like I've seen other authors who, like, structure their writing the way they do, like, even when I'm confused, I'm still drawn in. And they're still bringing that mysticism and that that sense of magic. Like, I just remember that how in the book they described how a pot of water was boiling. And I was like, wow, like, that is a beautiful description. Some of the images were haunting. Questions and themes that it brought up stayed with me after I finished it. And I still don't really have answers for them. So yeah, that, and I think I read 100,000 Kingdoms in the past year, and if I did, that one as well. Love the fantasy world, and Jemison's just very good at coming up with creative ways for people to be shitty. I'll put it like that. <laughs> uh, where do you see your channel in a year's time, and what do you hope to have achieved? I would really like to do some collabs, uh, maybe some roundtables. I'm... Trying to organize a readathon that I hope will be a recurring yearly readathon, and also just like I'm thinking of like a chill readathon I want to do, like just for funsies, that'll just kind of be like a one and done type deal. I think I've been very fortunate that, like, I think pretty much everyone I've asked to like either like just work with on something or like, oh, you want to buy read something, like, everyone said yes. I still want to be posting like twice a month at least. I've really been fighting the urge to like get invested in subscriber count. I just don't think it is good for me because now I'm working from home and I have a lot of time and a lot of energy for like my channel. But like once I go back to work, I'm just going to be tired and stressed and like I think the growth is just inevitably going to slow. And also just like being mindful that like subscribers get you certain things, like having a certain reach gets you things most definitely in terms of like, I would love to start getting like physical arcs of things. Like I would love if like, I believe Nettie Okorafor has a new book coming out uh, January 2021 called Remote Control about a young girl who is raised by death. And, you know, I would love to get a physical arc of that. Um, and for that, I will need to expand my following. So given that, like, a subscriber count is kind of integral to some of my goals of, like, getting arcs, I don't know. I honestly just don't know what's realistic for booktube growth. So maybe I would like to be at 500 by next year. 500 subscribers. So in a year's time, I hope to be organizing a recurring readathon and just like other smaller ones for fun that are one-offs. I hope to be posting twice a month and I hope to sometime in that time frame get like a physical arc of a book. And I hope to have more um, pose references for my thumbnails so I'm not always just like <laughs> like, I'm out of ideas, I need more poses. So, I'm not gonna tag anyone. I don't know what anyone's anniversary is, so. If it's your booktube anniversary soon, feel free to post. If you like the video, please hit the like button. If you wanna comment on anything I said, please comment below. If you just wanna wish me a happy, uh, <laughs> a 13 month booktube birthday, you know, please do so. Leave me like a little um, birthday cake or a party popper emoji. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. 
Thanks for watching. Goodbye.